Hello everyone, Daniel Yuck here. Thank you all for tuning in today. I appreciate you. Within this video, I'm going to be sharing with you all how I go about packing white. Should you have any questions along the way, please feel free to drop them in the comment section below and I'm going to do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. With that being said, let's dive straight on into this. Before I dive in and show you all some clips here of me packing white, I want to go ahead and kind of run over the logic real quick. So when it comes to packing white, any color really, whether it's white, black, Black, red yellow uh, it doesn't really matter I'm going to kind of go by the same guidelines and fundamental rules so allow me to touch base on the setup and the voltage range and all of that good stuff here so right now I am packing this white with the Mastor Pro I will leave links for you in the description below I'm also using a CNC police 11 round mag as you see right here now if you look closely I like to hang my needle tips out a little bit so that way I can look at the very tips of my needles working while while I am packing whatever color I am packing in now while I am doing this I'm also running my machine at about typically 6 volts 7.5 I rarely ever go above 7.5 when I'm packing as I don't want to cause much damage to the skin so depending on the machine that I'm using would determine the final voltage that I use to pack one thing that I do want to clarify and reiterate is depending on the needle configuration that I am using as well as the tattoo machine that I am using will determine what voltage I sit at when I pack so I will go ahead and explain further on that here in the video so depending on your technical abilities depending on your technical expertise depending on your personal experience that's going to determine where you sit within your voltage range what you are comfortable using for me personally 10 times out of 10 I'm going to be using a short pen style tattoo machine whether it's a NUMA 4 a CNC Q1 Q2 the CNC XWE the ink claw dagger there's so many to list but you get the idea so 10 times out of 10 for me I'm gonna be using using a short pen style tattoo machine. So I've adjusted to the setup that I am using on my end to align with the technical capabilities and skill sets that I have. So that's what I wanted to touch base on here in this video prior to getting into the technical application. So what I am saying is learn your gear, get comfortable with the craft, and practice on fake skin. Right here, I am demonstrating with true skin, fake skin. I will leave that in the description below for you as well so you can check it out on your end. I highly recommend not to skip this part. Practice on fake skin so that way we are acquainted and accustomed to the technical approach. So for this color white, when it comes to packing, I'm working off just the very tips of my needles. I'm not applying much pressure at all, and I kind of want to exhaust that, and I'm going to say that more throughout this video here. Again, I'm just using the very, very tips of my needles, and I'm making small circular motions from one point to another. So as you can see, I'm starting on the right of this lightning bolt right here, and I'm working my way on over. So from the screen, it's the top here of the lightning bolt, and I'm working my way down to the lightning bolt as you see along the way I'm using the very tips of my needles and I'm moving in circular motions I know that we can't fully see the needle tips here because of the pulling under however that's exactly what's going on when I apply the needles you can see the needle tips kind of ground and then start moving once the pulling begins we can't see them there now the reason why I'm going to be mentioning the term needle tips a lot here in this video is because that is all that I am working with. Here's a little bit more of a better angle and I'm actually going to show you here later in the video as well what I am talking about. A main rule of thumb that I'm constantly remembering is to work off just the very tips of my needles, start from one edge and go ahead and make it on over to the other is how I approach it. Now over time I figured that that was, or actually I learned rather, that that was half the battle. And it was half the battle because when I would pack I was still finding you know spots that weren't fully packed in and I couldn't figure out why so within this video I'm actually going to cover that as well on how to correct that so if you're experiencing patchiness throughout your packing um, I'm going to go ahead and touch base on that as well so patchiness could occur really with any color it doesn't matter if it's black white red blue green yellow whatever the case may be we can still get patches with any color now as you can see right here we have the white and then we have the natural skin tone going on what I used to do is I would kind of start away from the area that I should have so I was starting too much away now when I am packing I'm starting a little bit in the area that's already existing as you see right here so as you see I'm gonna start right here and this is where I'm gonna begin my new packing point 
this is what I was often overlooking, such a subtle detail within the process here. So the point in which I would begin the new packing area was not connecting with the areas that I've already packed, which would then cause patchiness throughout the piece that I was doing. So I had to learn that the hard way. As you see, if I were to start a little bit more out, then my circular motions may not make it all the way through. Because remember, we're going to make a certain amount of circular motions from one point to another. So even if one of those circular motions doesn't make it to the points that we've already packed, then we're going to receive patchiness in our packing. I also stated earlier that this was a round mag. Forgive me for that this is a cnc police 11 standard mag i'm going to play this in slow motion right here you're going to see the needles on the left side of the screen here from the white area to the skin tone area some of the needles are overlapping the white area that's already existing while we're packing new area on the right side of the screen as you see right here and this right here is essentially the new technique and approach that i am using to go ahead and get clean saturations now when i am doing this i'm keeping a consistent depth i'm keeping a nice speed for the voltage and setup that i am using along the way as well so because i'm very familiar with my setup and my hand and speed is tuned with my voltage I'm able to achieve really clean saturations the first time around it's very very rare now that I'll have to go back and kind of patch here patch there patch everywhere type of stuff I don't really do that so this is how I do it I work from one point I go on to another with small circular motions I'm making sure that my hand speed and voltage are perfectly matched together for the setup that I am using and I'm making sure that I am hitting at a consistent needle depth along the way so that way I don't damage the skin as well so for me, what I noticed is when I align my hand speed, my voltage, when I'm really comfortable with the setup that I'm using, I'm really mindful of where I'm placing the pigment, I'm using the proper technical approach upon packing as well, I'm always achieving good clean saturated results. For this clip right here, you're going to be able to see clearly where my needles are starting and ending here, where they're going in and out of in a circular motion. And you can see we're just slightly overlapping the existing layer that's already there while we're implementing a whole new layer of white there on the skin. And again, this is just kind of a repetitive process over and over and over until you've completed the areas that you were needing to saturate on your end. My logic for me, it's better to have this sort of practice, this sort of patient approach when it comes to packing, as opposed to try to rush it and have patchiness throughout the packing of whatever color there is. For me, wearing patchiness does not look good. It just means that the artist that did it, we can clearly see that there is either a lack of experience and or there is rushing involved. But you're gonna notice that it's just literally this same process over and over and over. I'm really mindful of where I am starting, aligning my hand speed with the voltage, I'm comfortable with the setup, you get the idea. Now, if you're worried about overworking of skin, me personally, I feel that the overworking of skin will occur if you're not experienced with a needle depth, you know, in terms of where to put the pigment, what layer the pigment should be in, and or if you're not experienced with packing in general meaning if you're going over the same area over and over and over I can definitely see plausible overworking of skin happening there however if you're very familiar with the fundamentals and you've packed before even on fake skin I believe that you're much uh, more equipped to come out successful packing on human skin I would like to point out that the technical approach that I'm sharing with you all is the same approach that I use to pack on human skin. However, some variables to consider are the stretching of skin, placement, etc. I will make more in-depth videos on how I go about packing on human skin, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for me for those. Now, if you're still around, you may have noticed that the process essentially doesn't change. It stays the same in terms of technical approach. However, what will change is the designs, where we are placing the pigment, the color. You get the idea. So in terms of technicality, that is how I go about applying white, packing in white. If I didn't touch base on anything specific and or if you have any questions about anything that you may have seen or heard throughout this video, I'm going to encourage you to drop a comment down below and I will do my absolute absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. I also have social medias all under the same name as this YouTube channel. I have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok all under the same name. I would truly appreciate your support on there. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me and ring that bell as I will be bringing more videos like this for you all. Thank you for tuning in yet again. You have a great day.